Hey, hello, and welcome back to Good Knit Kisses. I'm your host, Kristen, and today is Good Knit Kisses on Thursday. This is my last Thursday for a while. <laughs> I have an announcement on our, my posting schedule. I'll probably say it a few times in here due to live uh, viewers coming in, but welcome to the replay. If you're catching me on replay, this will be the last Thursday. I'm going to start going to Monday, Wednesday schedules on posting on Facebook, but I will be posting a video every Friday on uh, YouTube, and uh, I will be switching on and off between going on the Yarn Inspirations uh, YouTube page and my own uh, it, well YouTube channel. And uh, so whenever it is on the Yarn Inspirations um, site, then I will be uh, doing a live video on YouTube on Fridays. So um, there'll be something going on Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Uh, two of them will be on Facebook Live. So I'll, I'll tell that again to the live viewers when they pop in later. So <laughs> hey and welcome. Um, thank you for joining me this morning. A few things going on. Of course, I'm wearing my shawl from the new um, from the new book and I'll cover that. I'll go get a little closer look. Uh, I know some people wanted a little bit uh, longer to look at some of this stuff from the broadcast on Annie and I've also got the the loom here to kind of um, look at and uh, anyway just talk, talk and chat with you guys for a little bit uh, welcome hey good morning Robin hi Heather how are you guys so glad you're joining me hey Marie good morning how are you uh, I'm wearing my my hat again today from the book I'm telling you it's my favorite it's like super soft it's baby alpaca I mean who's not gonna like that <laughs> so I'm just saying <laughs> once you've worn it <laughs> I'll always pack it it up and take it <laughs> I think it's gonna be my new travel hat what do you think um Marie, <laughs> Marie oh you said you said good morning twice clink and good morning hey Lori good morning hey Tracy Brandy, my friend Brandy, how are you doing, girl? Eileen, hey Chris, good morning, beautiful Brandy. <laughs> good morning, good morning. Heather says, my husband is driving and I'm watching you. Hello, well here's cheers to a, a good uh, broadcasting trip on the road and then I'm not doing this. Uh, uh, uh. It's frozen, honey. <laughs> Get to a cell area. <laughs> Hopefully you've got enough data and I won't go too long. <laughs> oh, here's to free unlimited data, right? <laughs> um, we Speaking of data and Wi-Fi and all that stuff, um, we are redoing some stuff on the network today, which is kind of scary for me because I have to get a blog up for tomorrow and upload a video. I've got... Um, a video, uh, excuse me, I was working on late last night. I can't even call it last night. It was, it was the wee hours this morning and the, the, um, I couldn't help myself. I was only going to knit a sample and I ended up knitting up like the whole thing, um, the cloud pillow. And so now I have to stuff it cause it's just too darn cute. You know, it just is. And, um, so that pillow, um, I've got to finish stuffing it and then I'm going to show sewing it up and, uh, hopefully I've, I've got to, I'll have to edit out with me just saying, okay, and then you're going to have to do this because now I'm going to have to take that out and just actually show you. So anyway, I don't even know how long that's going to be, but I am going to have a video up tomorrow. It'll be fresh because I'm finishing it today. <laughs> Woo. And hopefully my network holds out or I'll be running to my sisters. Can I use your Wi-Fi? <laughs> So anyway, um, good morning, good morning. I'm wearing the shawl, I'm wearing the hat. I'll show you a little bit more close up today. And I wanted to talk to you about the broadcasting schedule. Now that more of you guys are here, I'm gonna welcome you and then I'll get started and I'll chat and stuff. Oh, hey, a thing just popped up and I was gonna tell y'all, so this is a good um, reminder, just got a thing popping up from Joann's. There's 25% off today for friends and family. And the coupon thing that I have pop up just now is like a three day, um, three day excursion thing. So I don't know if the friends and family thing is like for three days or what, but check your coupons, check your email, check your text, check the website. I don't know. Just check them if you need anything. <laughs> so... <laughs> 
I feel like a broadcaster, like with a, they did, they did, they did this in on the teletype, and there's a sale at Joann's. Run! Run! <laughs> it's like, a, do y'all remember Mervyn's? I think it was Mervyn's. They had, um, well, Mervyn's were, I'm in Texas, and so they had, there was a store, and they had a, um, a commercial, and the people were like waiting at the door for the sale, for it to, the door to open, and there, this, there was this lady, and she's like, open 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 like at the door <laughs> I feel like that sometimes if I want to go run to Joann's or somewhere in the morning before my broadcast because I want it to be open before then so I can just like show up and be like hey here you know anyway yeah I wish I could do that I wish they would just open for me that would be nice <laughs> or you or whoever hey let's see Robin oh right oh Heather you're in Mississippi Awesome. You know, everybody loves spelling that state. All the kids. I can spell, Missi I can spell Mississippi. M-I-S-S-I-S-S-I-P-P-I. -S 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 um, here we go. Here we go. Oh, I'm missing all these conversations. It's flowing. It's zooming past. Hey, Joanne. Good morning. Hey, Heather. You're in the hospital hanging out with your mama while she recovers from surgery. Well, Amber, I hope she recovers well. I'm glad you're here chatting with us, so it must be a good thing. So, um, anyway, hugs to your mama. Send her some love. Mm. Hey, Chris, uh, best wishes for your mom. That she says, yeah, Chris says, best wishes for your mom. You guys are all so awesome. Marlene, hey, Marlene from Belgium. If you keep telling me you're from Belgium, I'm going to be like, chocolate, can you send some chocolate? Can you tell that I need sleep and caffeine? <laughs> Amber, she's doing well. They took her little lady parts. She doesn't need them anymore because they're confident they took all the cancer off. That's that is the great part. Wow, they're confident. Well, I, yay. Oh, man, no chemo radiation. That's a praise God thing. Man, man, so good. So good. I'm so glad for her. Glad for you. Um, Joanne, you went to Joanne's yesterday. Do you just go to your namesakes and be like, that's me. Um, <laughs> Robin says, at least you might get to sleep next week. And I hope you have lots of great family time. Maybe you can sneak in a little yarn here or there. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so next week is spring break for my family. And it actually starts tomorrow. The kids are off. Like, they worked out if they had a snow day or something or an ice day um, for tomorrow to be that makeup day. But, of course, we live in Texas, and that rarely happens, so tomorrow they are off early. I thought it was pretty smart on the planner's part of the calendar, so um, yeah, that worked out really well for them, so it's it's nice for back-to-back. -back. It would be nice if we were going out of town, and then we were like, ooh, we have a few extra days, because we like to drive when we go out on vacation, but this year we're not really doing that because, well, I don't think we're doing that, um, because, well, we bought a house recently, so... <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, we can sightsee around here, right? We we live in a great area. There's lots to see. Um, Heather said, oh, yeah, I already said that one. Audrey says, I was watching your knitting video. Um, where did you get your double-ended wood uh, wood needles? My double-ended? Um, I have D my DPNs, my uh, double-pointed needles. Um, they're chow, I think, I think they're probably chow goo. And I got them, some I got at a local yarn store, and some I got at DFW Fiber Fest, which is a local um, yarn um, and crochet and knitting expo that's in the Dallas-Fort Worth area. And it's coming up in April, actually. It starts on my husband's birthday, which is not cool because then that means I have to miss some of it. <laughs> So, love that commercial. Open, open. <laughs> Jackie, good morning. Hey, Joan. Hey, Elizabeth. Marie, you're going to have foot surgery next Friday. Well, my best to you, Marie. I'm glad it's something they can operate on. I have one of those foot problems that's not operable, so that sucks. But I'm really glad that you can have 
the operation. So I wish you the best and good gliding on your little foot thing. <laughs> I have a friend who is like has been on those for a while because she had to have like multiple surgeries, so she has a little foot thing. And so she always had like this nice thing because that always happened during the DF DFW Fiber Fest, and so. She was, she's always like, uh, Marla was always zooming around DFW Fiberfest with that little pedal thing when you, you like, you have your knee on the little cushion thing and then she could like sit and I'm like, now I know that it's not something to be jealous of, but I wish I had your little scooter thing because I'm worn out. <laughs> so, uh, Elizabeth, you love what I'm wearing? Thank you. Okay. So this is a simple, this is a good transition here. So this is just a simple um, tank underneath here and then this shirt to show off this. So this is my shawl. Now this yarn here, um, this is called um, mix, uh, Mixer. Let me see if I can get my yarn. Let me get it. I should have a sample of it while y'all gaze at the flowers. Mixer. This is Barocco Mixer. And um, see how it has all this thick and thin in it? It changes on its own. And then when I make a double flower on this flower loom, and then I make this single, um, what I call a four point flower or a square flower, um, then they all look a little different. And then when you lay them out, I like to try and balance like the really thick ones with the thin ones and then thick and then thin. Do you see how that works? And so it has this beautiful delicateness to it. And we are originally going to use, um, a, a white or an, um, yeah, a white in this. There's a white in this. It did not work out well, um, just because, the crochet th um, strand, it, it triples itself because, you know, when you when you make a chain, you have three layers to that cord, right? So it gets really heavy. And so we actually ended up just using a thread, um, the, the um, like a bedspread cotton thread in a lilac color. And I think it turned out really well. Um, so this is, this is what it came from. And so you can see how how that worked out. I'll spread it out and show you guys. Um, I'll take it off here. I just wanted you to see it on. And um, and then the way we laid it out, all these flowers, it's not like a regular triangle shawl. So see how I have it like to where some of the petals um, are um, um, like here, so sorry. So like I have them where they look like they're kind of dripping off. You see that? It's like, I was t telling everybody on Monday, it reminded me of my, um, like my grandmother's wisteria. Um, she had this big wisteria, um, um, what do you call it? It's like a, a bush or it's like the, the, um, the branches or whatever they like. What is that? It's like a grapevine sort of thing. I'm not sure what you call it. I'm not a garden. I'm not a, I, I'm, I don't garden, but anyway, <laughs> I can't even talk. Gardener. Um, she had one of those benches that swings. It was mounted under this metal um, trellis, and then she had wisteria that was all on it, and so it would just hang and drip. And so that's what made me think of this. Um, let me move this aside, and I will show you guys. What does it say? Oh, munchkin on the keyboard, Joanne. Three, one, four. <laughs> I know who that is. Hi, sweet girl. Only if you live in Dallas, Heather says. Chris says, wish me, wish me luck. Oh, you, you have an appointment in two hours. Oh, well, I hope, uh, yeah, good luck. I hope that works out. Yes, yeah, staycations are the bomb. <laughs> I'm going to lay this out, and we can really look at this. And um, did you guys get to see, I use this special lens. Um, I'm going to see if I can use that lens today. Um, I'm moving my project. This is for the um, video. Um, did y'all get to see the live um, the live chat on Annie's site? And I had a, a Beth there. Anyway, I used a special lens so you could see way behind me so you could see this. Okay, so let me see if I can show it to you here. You're on one of the knee scooters, Lori. Awesome. 
You're off to babysit. Okay. Awesome. Okay. Wisteria is a bush. Thank you. Or a vine. Climbing vine. Maybe that's what it is. Okay. I'm moving my thing. Okay. I'm going to turn. And he's live. Okay. Let me flip it. Okay. So this is it. I don't know if I can put this on here while it's working. Let's see if this will, let's see if that'll work. Did that work? How's that? I can't even see it because I've got it all angled. I mean, I've got the, the top part here. Okay, so this is, that, that, that camera works better. Okay, so here, and then when I want to get a zoom in, I'll show you. So this is it right here. This is the edge. So these, these flowers are doubled. Um, so you have this part that's crocheted around, and then you have the double flower that sits over it. And then what we did is we added a little bit of fabric glue. Now this can be slippy, but once you have these petals locked in, if say a ring snagged it or something and it gets off, then you can just pull on these, um, on, on these chains here and center it back up. So that actually happened when I opened the broadcast up. So it is delicate. Um, however, as long as you got them all locked in there, they should be, they should be fine. So, um, okay, like this one got pulled by my ring. I'm not wearing one right now, but um, you can just pull on that and then straighten it out. So I wanted to show you how that can, see how that got straightened out. Okay, so here it is. So it looks, a look, now you can add more flowers to it. I actually had original plans to keep it going, um, but this is how I have it. It may look a little awkward this way, but when it's on, it has this really cool, drape to it so see how that see how that looks and see how what i did is i even out let me just zoom it in because that's just not close enough for me okay see how these some of these are really delicate see how that was really delicate and then this gets a little bit heavier and some of these are even heavier what do you guys think about that It's amazing, Crystal says. So nice. Thank you. <laughs> awesome. Okay, so this is um, the yarn that was used here is this Broco Mixer. This this is actually found on the Annie site, and we've got all this stuff listed in the book. Um, I think I, I've i used two of these. I think I used two, um, like, one and a, like one and a half. And um, I think I, ha I bought more than that, but... Um, that's my camera. I gotta close that in, up. So again, <clears throat> it's using this loom here and you have to use this loom. Someone was asking yesterday, um, if you can use something else and achieve the same look. I really don't think so because uh, to me, this is a more unique loom. Um, now again, this is not a knitting loom. This is a weaving loom. I mean, call it what you want. If you're a loom knitter, you still may end up, you know, using this and still calling it a loom knit flower, but it's really not knit. Um, so it comes with all these little looms inside and you could use them standalone by themselves, but with the base on there, it, it gives you something really hardy for your hand to go on. And so you just take all these little pieces out. It, it also comes with a, like a bent tapestry needle and regular. The One of the pieces that I don't use is this middle section here. So I don't use this and I don't use uh, we didn't use this middle, um, this middle circle one. So these pieces I didn't use, but for all the other flowers, uh, in the book, we used all these other ones. So you really, we, we, we really do show you how to use it. So you do, if you already have this loom, um, you're going to get so many more projects than you've seen before, um, actually spelled out. Okay. Because, um, uh, this book here, it, it gives you directions on how to do stuff and then they show you things, but, um, not all of it is um, spelled out like here's a pattern or whatnot um, and a lot of them are real simple and they're great but anyway but the flowers used in here are this one which is a double flower 
Okay, so it uses these two. And this square flower. Okay, and then we turn it on the side to make this diamond. Okay. And so that's that. And then this is the book. And then see how see how it lays on her? Let me see if there's another picture of that. Hold on, let me just flip through. I was thinking there was another angle of her wearing it. Hold on. I'm just getting it closer to my eyeballs here at my angle. There's another one. And see how the petal, they kind of drip. I, I think it looks like it's dripping, you know. So, now, this, this is um, for intermediate. The patterns are intermediate as far as, like, um, hooking them together, the stunning scarf and everything, um, hooking that together, um, this petal shawl. Um, but, like, this brooch is an easy, um, the headband falls in the easy category. The, um, this barrette is easy. The clutch does fall in the intermediate category. Beth said yesterday it falls in the easy, you know, maybe it's beginner plus, um, or easy plus. Um, uh, the, um, it's, it, it, there's a diagram and everything, um, showing how to do it. Um, see what else. The beret. Where's the beret? Oh yeah, the cowl. This is a, a similar joining technique, so that's going to be in the intermediate. Um, here's another perspective of that. Where is the man? I'm trying to find the beret. I'm sorry, my page is like. Oh, hello. Okay. It is in the intermediate. Okay. So these are going to fall in the intermediate category. No, the book isn't signed. When you win, if you win. Okay. So we have a giveaway where we're giving away one loom and then a, um, a book, a digital book to three different people. So three people will get a set of them. It'll be digital. And then this hard book, you can order a hard book or a digital book. And, uh, anyway, I'll have a link below later. Um, anyway, and then I may, I may do, um, I'm, I'm not sure. I, I'm limited on what I can show on how to, how to set this up, but I'll see if I can. Let me, let me see your questions here. Um, here we go. I want to, I want to, it's hard for me to read your questions when I'm zoomed out that way. I'm sorry. Let me go backwards. Y'all watched live as well. Amazing. Crystal Hernandez says. I'm glad you all like it. Elizabeth says, love it. It's beautiful. My mom wants one, but I don't crochet. Yeah, I know. It's, hey, but it's good, good motivation, right? <laughs> um, it's $8.99, so it's really, it's really not that expensive. I would say if you have been um, frustrated by these um, directions or maybe just the illustrations on this book, um, it's worth it just to get this one because... We spent a lot of time making full color illustrations and then I clarified some things and then um, I did a darning technique which I think looks better. Um, the technique that they showed, dar darning is the way to stitch it all together and um, I did it in a, a little bit different way than the way that they showed in the other directions. Um, anyway, but I, anyway, I kind of I kind of like our instructions because, well, not I, I not a kind of, I, I do like our instructions because A, they're color, B, they're bigger, C, I think we clarified better. So, um, it's a good, um, it, it's a good thing to have coupled with that loom. Uh, <laughs> Gala, I'm going to quote you. I wish I could like Pop that up on the screen. I love it. It's made with the luscious texture, delicate and romantic all at once. Mmm. Ah, oh, that's what I thought when I made it. So I love that you said that. <laughs> so delicate looking, Chris says. Beautiful, Josephine. I love it. Beautiful. Joanne says, I love the texture you get from using a thick and thin yarn. It gives a shawl more depth. Since not all the flowers are the same weight. Yeah, absolutely. And it because it's all one color. And you know, you could you could get a similar color for the thread and um and really go to town on it. Um we the other reason why we did not use the mixer, um, 
it's like in camouflage I couldn't find it this one had white in it but when we crocheted it up because of the thick and thin it made it real wonky so making um, having that thin consistent thread was critical plus the white was kind of like this icy white and so it almost looked like it was dirty and the yarn wasn't dirty and it was a beautiful yarn all by itself like if you wanted to make a white shawl out of that with the flowers with the white and then use this thread in the lilac that would look really pretty too in fact you could do um ooh, oh man you know what would be really pretty is if you're making one for a bride um you could even make a veil out of it Oh my gosh, I'm thinking if you got the white in this and did the flowers in this and then did like a cream thread or a white thread and made it and you could make it even longer, that would be an amazing bridal shawl. Don't you think? Man, that would be really pretty. Or like a new spin on a doily and um, or like a runner on the table. In fact, the instructions for the um, stunning shawl are a select portion of this triangular shawl. I'm sorry, stunning scarf for this shawl here. It's a smaller version. And so it's amazing what, um, whoops, like this, this scarf is similarly made to this shawl. Yeah, um, it really is. And it's using a thicker, it's using a thicker, um, no, we did use the bread spread stuff. Um, but anyway, we, we found a, um, a thread that was similar. And so anyway, it's a three color, but technically there's a fourth color in there. But um, isn't that amazing? So if I make a double flower that has three colors versus a double flower with only one color, there's a complete difference. You can even mix, like if you did double flower in one color versus another, and then do it, anyway, do a dot. Anyway, uh, the world is your oyster. <laughs> All that imagination. Yeah, I could keep going on. I know Beth's like, we should make another book. <laughs> I'm like, I got a lot to do. <laughs> yes, we should. <laughs> Krista needs to duplicate herself. Um, you saw that same loom on clearance at Joann's after you ordered yours online? Uh, well, I'm sure it's going to make a comeback and be <laughs> not on clearance anymore. Um Amber, Kristen has a great beginner videos on YouTube for crochet. Yeah, I've got some uh, crochet videos on YouTube. Um, I have some that are mine and some that are from Mikey and they're up on my channel. Um, and because I have some things from uh, my uh, on his channel that's of mine. So we kind of trade it off. So he's got some beginner crochet stuff and then I do too. There's just a series from him on my channel. Um, and check him out. But Beth has, um, if, and depending on your style, Beth also teaches crochet. So check out her channel. It's Beth N T X one. It looks like be thin in Texas <laughs> one. And that's her channel. Um, she goes by crochet, a trunk full of fun. But if you just are looking for her, um, just Google Beth ham or Elizabeth ham and you'll find her. Uh, Jackie says it looks cute. Oh, Heather, you have to watch the replay when you get Wi-Fi. Yeah, I figured it was getting spotty on you. Have a good day. Have a good day. Chris, uh, yeah, that loom is pretty awesome. Uh, Amber says, I've tried crochet and I can't get it. Um, yes, the giveaway is international. Yes, um, uh, Isel. Um, yes, the giveaway is international. Mm -hmm, absolutely. I made sure. Chris, I uh, taught myself to crochet because of an old time loom after uh, making a bazillion flowers and realized I had to crochet them together. Yeah, yeah, I saw you comment on that on Annie's. That's pretty cool. Yeah, um, absolutely. Uh, oh, you just bought the book on Amazon. Thank you, Lee. Thank you. Well, if you register for the um, giveaway, so if you buy, yeah, that actually is not a bad idea. So if you're buying the hard book because you want the hard book, then register for the giveaway because it's it's you get the loom and the digital book. I like to have um, digital for my phone, but then I also like to have the hard book because it's it's just really nice to have it all in full color, like right in front of you like that. Um, awesome. All the possibilities. 
Yeah, it definitely sparks ideas. Yeah, yeah. Loom. Oh, Angie. Okay, this is the Loom. Let me see. Oh, I've got one far out of reach, but it, it, the, this this is the Loom here. It's by Clover. It's the Hannah Ami Loom, and this is what it looks like, like the all the pieces separate. So you have a base unit, and then you put your Loom on. Okay, there's all these different all these different looms here. Um, in fact, they made it with this little uh, clap, this little thing here, so you can like take your project to go. Um, you can put all your looms together. And um, what I like to do is carry like a gallon um, zippy bag, plastic bag, and then I put all my parts in there. And then I'll put like a separate little um, bag that has um, my, um, I can put all my scraps and things like that in there so it doesn't get all crazy in my, in my bag and I don't throw them away because I might have like a long strand that I need to use as a tie later on. Um, I mean, unless they're little pieces then I throw it away. But like if you're traveling in the car, this is actually a great travel project because it's so small and all the pieces are plastic. Um, so, and with the little clamshell thing, um, it's just that if you have, like, let's say you're still working on this thing, you can put this on and clamp it down and let the yarn kind of stick right there. And the, but, but you need somewhere to put all these little pieces, right? So you need to have like some kind of zippy, um, plastic bag. Um, <laughs> cause, cause he says, yes, please make a book. <laughs> Just all all these ideas. You guys can come up with them too. Yeah, and when you make them, post them to the um the page. Oh, way to go, Bridget. She says she's doing her first C to C ever, and you're a beginner crocheter. Awesome. And she says she wants to see the loom. I'll see if I can bring it out again, and I'll see if I can wind it. Um, I'm just I'm reluctant to show any more on the loom, just because um I was I'm limited on what they'll they'll let me show. But I think I could just do a single flower, and show you how to do it. Um, yeah, so thank you for the link, Joanne. There's a link for the giveaway, and we'll pin that in the post later so you can find it. Um, the other flower loom, Angie, um, is only going to get you um, just a round loom with just nothing inside, that 12-peg bloom loom flower loom. It's not going to get you um, all these different things. Like I do, there's a geometric cowl. I use this big square one on. Um, I do this woven um, one with a um, hexagon. The little bitty square loom is what I use um, for the um, the little dot flower that's in between on here. Um, I just, I don't know of any other loom that will handle it. Um, you know, usually I'll say, oh, you can use this one or this one or this one, but mm -mm. no, this one's pretty, um, pretty specific. So, um, I saw that one, got the other one. You need a loom investor or a boyfriend who can pay for my habit. <laughs> I understand. <laughs> I understand. Um, the way that I started building up my library, I mean, of course, I know that I do have people send me stuff now. I do know that. Um, but when I started, um, I started with an eBay gift card of $30. Um, someone had given it to me for my birthday actually a few years prior and I just hadn't used it and then I bought I taught myself how to knit I taught myself how to crochet and then my money that I spent was a total of twenty dollars and I went to the store and I bought like when like really the night that I started learning um, how to um, crochet and knit and all that stuff because um, I had been taught as a kid but like I just I hadn't practiced it but um, yeah, I went to the store, 20 bucks, Walmart. I got a set of looms for like $13.97. Got some yarn. I got some black yarn, y'all. It was that was dumb. It was a medium weight. <laughs> and um, and then I so I got that yarn and I think I got one other yarn. I think I got like a homespun or something or boucle. Yeah, I got the worst yarns to start learning on. Uh, but yeah, I spent 20 bucks. And so what I did is I sold my first item and then made some money on that. And then I bought more. And I used all the um, profits, not the part that it cost. I used the profits for um, in investing um, in getting more things, and then I would keep some, and then anyway, and then I would I would buy more. So like that's that's how I um, managed that. And so it stayed. Ended up I ended up getting a separate bank account for my husband 
just for my loom stuff and my, my knitting stuff so that it was like a separate thing and I can manage that all by myself. And then, um, and it didn't, it didn't come out of my household funds. Like you can do like an enveloping thing too, if you don't want to do a bank account. Um, but you just, you got to keep yourself accountable because <laughs> you can go kind of crazy buying all these extra, uh, this yarn and stuff like that. But my big thing is I was like, well, I need to build up the looms so that I have stuff to make this on. Right. So because a lot of times when you're first beginning, like there are people who are like, oh, I'm not doing this anymore. I, you can have my, my yarn stash. That does happen. <laughs> um, so I, cause I end up getting some from my grandmother too. Well, it was after she had passed, my grandfather gave it to her cause no one was using it. he's like, Hey, by the way, mamma has got all this stuff at the house. Come, come look at it. Um, Angie says, okay, I got intimidated by that one, but not anymore. You make me, <laughs> make me better. Aw, thank you. Le uh, Chris says, the loom is so much more sophisticated than the one I had way back in the day. Two size circles, two size squares, and that was it. Yeah. Uh, Robin says, I know you're talking about the book today, but you should show off your finished deep water cowl from last week, last Thursday crochet. I see it behind you. <laughs> you saw that. I snuck that behind so you could see it. I'll show you in a second. Um, oop. Your grandmother taught you? <laughs> That's good. Yeah, it keeps you close to grandma. This is last week, you guys. Help me on it. Um, this is the cowl that we did last week. And um, you helped me on this. And this is it right there. And we worked on it. And then I did these buttons. Now here's the thing. The buttons are too small. It really needs to be like a four millimeter, not a three. And um, so they're they're kind of coming, they're popping out. So I need to get some bigger buttons or um, because I could just fit this right over my head, um, I could just tack it down. And, um, but yeah, so like it opens like this. So, isn't that cool? And I got like, um, I don't know how many of you guys get like this, but I started getting, my tension started to get, because I was excited because I was going to finish, my tension started getting tighter, and so my color pooling started changing. So like, I was doing so well, like my color pooling was doing amazing, and then this is what happens when your tension starts changing, it started creeping over, and it totally moved over this way. So, man, that color pooling is a... Yeah. <laughs> anyway, so that's that. And um, let me see if I can put this on. It's just it's just not um it's not hooking together very well. Um now I want to I want to put it um I want to do the shawl. I want to put the shawl back on. Y'all want me to wear the shawl and then I'll show you the loom down here. So the the shawl, you have to be careful cuz there is a right side and a wrong side to the shawl. And um not that it looks terrible, but um, but it's like the the double flower part is there. You could even like if you wanted to, you could make um, see how this is a double. Excuse me, this is a double here. After you're finished stitching it all together, you could flip it over and um, make another double flower and attach it on here. So you could make it double-sided if you wanted to, you know. So um, how long did it take to make that? Ah, that's a good question. I mean, I made, I don't know how many flowers I made. I made like 200 flowers for this book, maybe more. Um, yeah. The flowers really didn't take long. Um, they really didn't. Um, but it was the planning and the moving things around and stuff. So it's really kind of hard to gauge. Um, so yeah. And then I don't know how long it took Beth. Beth is the one who crocheted them together. So let me, let me be clear. So I was, um, I was asked to do this project and I said, you know what? My crochet level of, for writing patterns isn't there. And so I said, you know what? Beth is going to be amazing. So we pulled a Beth into this project and I'm like, do you want to do this with me? You're my buddy. 
let's do it. And cause she, she's like, Oh my gosh, yes, this is, and I know exactly how we would do it. And so it was just, it's awesome. Beth and I've known each other for years now and, um, I trust her and she's, um, she's the expert at what she does. She's so very good. She knows how to think on her feet. She knows how to problem solve, which I love. <laughs> I love a problem solver. And, uh, she made it, made it beautiful and we wanted to make it as simple as we could. Yes, it's intermediate, but we wanted to make it join as you go so that it's not too overwhelming. So we spent a lot of time really talking about it and contemplating about what, what would happen. So yeah, Beth Ham rocks. And yeah, um, <laughs> you would wear it to the beach, Angie. Yeah, I would. Well, I, yeah, I'd probably make it in cotton then if you're going to do that and be sure and um, really secure it. <laughs> um, hey, Jewel Fly. Hey, I see you jumped in. Okay, who am I? <laughs> What was the, Lee comes in and goes, gah! <laughs> Jamie says, wow. How many flowers is in it? Oh gosh, my memory. <laughs> I think I have to go count. <laughs> I have a diagram. I have a diagram that actually shows you. Um, let's see. About 70 of the main, uh, I just counted it real quick. It may say it in here and I can't even remember. But there's about 70 of the main and then there's all the other little sub flowers. So there's well over 100 flowers in the petal shawl. That's what this is called, the petal shawl. And then there is the um, stunning scarf, which is very similarly done, but it's uh, done in three colors. And then the cowl. Oh, it's one of my favorites. It was one like in concept I had to explain over and over again. <laughs> but once we did it, everybody's like, oh my gosh, that's so simple. It's so cool. Um, it is it is intermediate the way it's joined. But anyway, it's using this square loom. And um, anyway, I don't even, I can't even, I can't tell you. It's just, it's just awesome. So, and it makes you really think about how things are put together when you see it in the book. Um, it's like these squares and then we, um, they're all lined up, but then shift them and then we stitch it together on the end. It's really cool. You have to see it. And then the diagram is in there and everything. So, um, yeah, but they really don't, it really doesn't take that long, especially the cowl is like super fast super fast to do. The thing that takes the longest on the cowl is this chain stitch, but there's not as many flowers to do. So it probably takes more time to do the flowers than it does the actual stitching together for the cowl. So, yeah. Um, yeah, Lee, it's lovely. I wish I had more time to do um, yeah. <laughs> anyway, so yeah, you can uh, click on that. Oh, Heather says, my mother-in-law gave me $40 to buy my first looms. This past November, I went to Joann's during a sale and got an Afghan loom. Sweet! A box of boy mixed looms and a boy extra large loom. Add $10 of my own money. Oh, it cuts you off. It says, I blame something. <laughs> uh, blame creativity? Uh, <laughs> Anyway, all right, what else was I gonna show you? Okay, I was gonna show you um, this. Oh, while you're still here, I wanna talk about my posting schedule. So next week is um, spring break. I will not be posting next week. However, a video will come out on Friday. I do have a couple of personal videos that um, I really wanna get out there. We recorded during the holidays, like Christmas, um, my, how to make my mom's fudge. And I have the I have it all like all the video recorded and I've been meaning to edit and put it up. So I might actually put that up in the middle of the week. I know it sounds weird to go ahead and do that, but I think I'm going to, just as a bonus. And then um and then I've got but on Friday uh next week I'll have a um a video come out. Um I have this video. If you wanna see how to do it, I did it on my Kristen Mangus public figure page. Um, but I need to edit it down and put that up on YouTube. Um, oops, 
So that will come out. And then when I come back, um, I will have another video come out on um, the um, a little baby hat and a sample of how to do the little cardigan that's in the Modern Baby Lookbook. Um, but tomorrow comes out the video for this. And it's the pillow that looks like this. This cloud pillow. Isn't it sweet? And then this is the back part. I made the back last night. I stayed up all night. And then I'm about to stuff it after I get off the... the um, I was about to say, when I get off of the phone with you guys, um, I'm going to stuff it. I have the um, I have the poly filled down here on the floor. And uh, let me tuck that back away. And then, um, so I will be broadcasting now on Mondays and Wednesdays on Facebook Live. We'll still do Monday Q&A. And then Wednesdays will be the days where I'm just going to show you whatever I'm working on. Whether it be loom, crochet, or needle, you get to see it. If I've got more than one to show, I'll show you more than one. If it's just one, that's what I'll do. And it might be a tutorial um, or me just stitching away. So um, that way you get your Kristen fix three times a week. So Monday, Wednesday is Facebook, and Friday is YouTube. Okay? Um, what is the best polyfill? Uh, I don't know if I'd say it was the best polyfill. This one I picked up at Hobby Lobby. This one right here, um, this is, uh, it says 100% polyester. I don't know. I mean, it's made, it's, it's for, um, it, this is 340 gram, um, bag, I guess. But anyway, they use it for different stuffing. And so anyway, it's clean. It's, um, it's cloud-like, <laughs> um, so anyway, that's, that's what I'm going to use. The stitches are pretty dense. Um, yeah, they're pretty dense. Um, you can use a loom to make this. Um, if you could, you can e-wrap, um, if you want, but if you e-wrap, it's going to make it too loose. And I think some of the stuffing could come through. I would think it would make it too loose, but, um, I would do a U-wrap, a loose U-wrap stitch and then your stitches will be fine. And then polyfill going in there should be perfect. So, yeah. Um, I don't make a whole lot of toys, so I have this small bag, but if you make them, you probably know a best resource to get like a big bag of them. By the way, this pattern calls for two um, it, two balls of the um, Pipsqueak, the Bernat Pipsqueak, this. Let me show you. Okay, this is what's left. I made the one pillow from, this is what's left. So, um, I'm guessing that the pattern actually doesn't say, that's the only thing about the pattern I didn't like, is um, it didn't say how many you get from here, and it calls for 10 yards of the black, but you have to buy a whole big thing of it, obviously. So um, this definitely has a capability to make um, uh, definitely one or one and a half pillows, and then that's why you, I guess you need the second ball. But um, anyway, but you can make three, I'm going to say three pillows from that pattern, and um, I used, it calls for 10 yards in the black for the face, this face part. Okay. Um, I, I pulled out three yards and did the face. And I didn't have to pull out any more. So I'm guessing the reason why they said 10 is because um, you need uh, three for each um, pillow. So, and there's three in the picture. Okay. So... Yeah, um, how do I do the YouTube chat? Kasid says, so if you will go to um, Good Knit Kisses, I'm sorry, go to youtube.com slash Good Knit Kisses, the little backsplash and then write Good Knit Kisses, and then click on subscribe, and then next to subscribe, there's like a little bell icon or like a, like a edit button, or you can hover over that, and then um, let it know that you want um, email alerts to send alerts to you and then that will come in your um, inbox but also it should alert your um, it should alert your phone um, that I'm going live you may have to tweak some of your stuff and like can maybe connect your phone to it or somehow I'm not really sure how all that works I just know that you can uh, set up alerts in that way so if you are not um, on YouTube, if you have a Gmail account, you pretty much have a YouTube account, so you can sign up and subscribe to accounts that way. That's a great, just a little tip for you. If you are um, 
uh, if you've been hesitant on signing up for a YouTube account, um, one great reason is if you're logged in, it will keep an account of your history and you can go back through the history and find a video that you've seen recently. You can also remove something from your history, but also if someone gets on your computer and they watch a video without permission, i.e. kids, you'll know what they watched, especially if they don't realize that you're signed in. So you'll be able to, um, see those things. This has happened to me. <laughs> uh, but yeah, if you want to chat, um, you can just, when you get the mobile thing, you can chat mobile. Um, you can chat on um, if YouTube Live if it goes on the desktop. If you're on the desktop or laptop or an Android, you can do the super chat feature, which is just a, an extra way to um, to say hello. And um, you can you can pay to do that. If I ever get super chats, I've already uh, promised I'm going to be using them to pay for captioning and the captioning project is going really well. I have like eight in the queue to, um, to proofread over. I have basically have to watch the video and double check them. Um, I've already, I think I've approved eight already. Um, so anyway, I have like 400 videos and I have probably done at least 20 myself probably more than that, um, either myself or I've paid for them. I'm no, I know I've spent over at least a thousand dollars on, um, captioning. Um, Lori says, are you crocheting the panels together or using a needle? These are crocheted together. This is a, this is a crochet book. You wrap Angie on a loom. Uh, my loom, this like a knitting loom. This is for the cloud pillow. So that's like if you just put the yarn to the back and lift over instead of wrapping it around like that. And you can save your favorite tutorials. Yes, you can make a playlist. You can make a playlist of all your favorite crochet videos or certain types or even like it could be a combination of people, um, different teachers, or you can make a playlist of just their stuff. I, I wouldn't necessarily do that because you might have a ton of stuff you like from from that person and then keep in mind we have playlists too and you can save those playlists you can also subscribe to playlists like you know say you don't want to subscribe to that person but you're like oh I like that playlist they put together if you'll subscribe to it and look at the notifications it should send you something so um, if I think something applies to a certain playlist I'll add it to it and so if you're subscribed then um, it'll go to you I don't usually talk about that but anyway all right if I missed your question, just write it again because I don't really want to go back and forth a whole bunch. All right, let me get my, um, I'm trying to get some yarn out so I can wind and show you how to do this loom. What time was it? Okay, I'm coming up on the hour. Okay, I'm gonna flip the camera. Okay, give me, I'll just chat for a minute while I maneuver. Okay, so I'm gonna do one that's not in the book. This is just a single. Okay, this is if, I'm, if I've got a single going on. I just take my base. And then I take my, um, this is my circular loom. It kind of fits in that little circle spot. And then you can see the little knobs that match up. Okay. So you just put that right on there, lock it into place. Okay. And then um, I'm going to take, let's see, let's do, let's wrap with the green and we'll darn with the purple. Uh, this yarn is, oh, I lost my my thing this one is I think this is vintage yeah this is Barocco vintage um, this is color fennel if you're wondering and then this is also vintage but I can't remember the color it's like a plum color and let me get out my um, I need to get out a needle here because I don't know where the bent needle went. bent needle went Oh, I need to get another one so you guys can really see that. Mm. 
Now you can see this one better, can't you? <laughs> All the things I think about when I'm making a tutorial, you can see it. Okay. So let's do this. Let's um, jump on in here. I'm going to get my scissors ready. Okay. I'm going to show you just all the different kinds of looms you can get on here. And this is that cover. And this is in case somebody says, what is that loom? Let's get, that's the background. Okay. So what I do is I stick this, it's got this little uh, notch here. And um, I just stick this right on down and pull it up through that notch and just tie it on there loosely to hold it. And it's got enough tail that I can do something with. If I want a little longer, I can pull that. And then you just start winding. So I go across and around and down. Okay, and then go up, around and down. Okay, I'm just turning. And so as I come to the pedal and I finish the pedal, I just put my thumb on it and just hold it down. If you hear banging, we have someone working on our house right now. Hopefully my network doesn't go down. And so you just keep weaving around. This is a worsted weight. I believe this is a worsted weight. Does it say the weight on here? Yeah, this is a medium weight yarn. And you can see um, where it falls. I put it right at the very bottom because this can be slippery. There's no little knobs at the end of the, the pegs here. Oops. I'm sorry about for all the noise. So no, it doesn't rotate. You rotate. I feel like um, <laughs> it's like a Ross from Friends. Pivot! <laughs> Pivot! Okay, so I've gone all the way around, right? And then, um, so this one right here, okay, see this guy right here? So I can go all the way around, and then I just um, go across, and then I'm going to cut it. But I like to just go ahead and give it one more... Um, loop for length and then that then I cut it and then see how I'm like I can kind of balance it out like this so like let's say I was gonna stop and I'm in the middle of traveling um, I can do this and lock it into place and it snaps it in and then I can move on so if someone stops me in the middle of what I'm doing just do that just bend it around just kind of wind it around and then when you come back to it it'll be locked in position how about that right but if I let this go and let this tension go it's gonna pop off we don't want it to pop off right so now I can just safely cut this right and then I'm going to thread my needle okay Chris have a good appointment can y'all hear that is it loud he's cutting through drywall <laughs> It's not the, I wish I had, I don't know where my needle went for this. It's not the needle that comes with the loom, so. All right, so now that I've got all that extra, um, see how this is going across, okay? And now I'm going to go down through here, go between these two petals. I'm calling, I'm calling this a petal, this a petal. So I'm gonna go across from where this ended, right? To the other side and then I'm gonna go between the petals and go down you can't hear it oh good okay good <laughs> I'm actually getting ready to buy a bunch of invest in some soundproofing stuff because we've had a whole thing oh my gosh there's been some kids doing drag street racing down the street it's horrible I did not realize this neighborhood was gonna have some of that that I could hear and um, oops and planes oh, oh my word so anyway, so I, I take that down through the other side to secure it, and then now I can pull that off, okay? And then it's not, it's not fully secure yet. Now I want to take um, this one. So, so see, now this is on the other side and it's holding it in. Now I'm gonna take this one off, 
yeah okay and now I'm gonna bring it up and over okay so this one's coming out and it's on this side and I'm gonna bring this one up and over and I'm gonna make that go to the back This is just the way I do it. This is the way I show how to do it in the book. Or we, we talk about it and we write it out in the diagrams. So then um, we're gonna come down through another set of petals. I don't like to do it from that big space. See that gap that's there? I like to kind of come over and go to another one. So we go around, down, and now I can turn this over. And then I've got these long tails and then I can just tie that off here. And we're gonna do another one. Tie that off here. And if you had a, especially a, um, a very slippery um, fiber, you could go ahead and take a little dab of fabric glue and put it right there and just leave your tails long. Now this is not darned, okay? This is not ready to come off, no. Then I'm gonna take my darning material. Now you can use the, the green as well. I'm just making uh, purple to be the middle. I'm trying to find the end of my yarn here. There we go. Okay, I'm gonna pull out about a yard or so, yard and a half. Okay, so now I've cut this. This is totally separate from the ball. Okay, and now I'm going to um, come up from the back. So we're just gonna come up from here. I'm just gonna pick in between some petals. See, I'm between these petals. Come all the way up, pull all this yarn through, and I'm gonna leave my tail at the back. I'm gonna hold on to it, okay? And if you really want to, you could come and, and tie it, but I'm just gonna hold it. So now that I know it's coming from here, I'm gonna go straight across so I, I went between these two so now I'm gonna come straight across here and I'm gonna go to here and I like to kind of hold it upside down so it doesn't get caught okay and it just I'm just sewing so now I went down through here okay I went down through this side so I want to come up from the back here okay so I'm just rotating around okay so I'm coming up and I'm gonna go down. I'm gonna move over um, one petal. And then I'm gonna come in here. I'm gonna rotate around. And let's see, did I go, oops, there is a piece of fuzz. Okay, so I went through there and I can check it. And I need more light, sorry. Um, so I'm going to go through here. Okay. And then I'm going to go down through this one. I can, I like to pull them back and say, did I go through that or not? Yeah, the replay, you'll be able to rewind and pause and all that, all that. This is the live right now. And then we go and go it up. And turn, you see how I'm kind of rotating this around counterclockwise. I normally turn it upside down. I'm trying to do this so you can see it as it goes through. And then turn. If you're unsure, you can go back through again. Make sure and go between those petals. Let's see if we can pull that through like this faster. You'd have to mark the loom. Yeah. That's that's completely up to you. You might have to make like a starting dot for yourself or something. And you can also count and go, okay, I know I have this many petals and I've done this many. 
I'm just not counting out loud because I'm trying to, <laughs> I'm trying to chat and <laughs> do all this at the same time. So. The other thing this does is, uh, oh, and, and I kind of rotate these to kind of get them out of the way. Uh, the other thing it does is it helps make a separation between each petal. going the right way. What am I doing? Ah! I lost it. Hold on. This is weaving. This is a flower loom, but technically it's weaving. It's not knitting. Someone's asking. You don't need any knitting or crochet experience to make the flowers. Okay, so I've gone through all these petals and I gotta do that one. Okay, so now uh, what I do is I kind of look between all these petals. It's like, did I get them? Do I see this um, purple beyond it? And then once I'm pretty sure I got it all, <laughs> um, I think I got it all. Okay. Did I get it all? That one needs it. How many times do you go in and out? You go around each petal. So as many um, pegs as you have, you're gonna go um, in and out around all of them once. Oh, shoot. Gonna make that, cut a new thing here. This is not, I'm, I'm gonna say this again, this is not the, the needle for this loom. It's actually slicker and it's better. I just, I misplaced it <clears throat> for this tutorial here. So I'm just trying to find that last one that I need to do. Let me get that one done. Yeah, it's that one. So what I do is I just kind of spread it out and inspect what I did. Make sure I got between all of them. And it's gonna be right across, I just, had started to do the wrong thing. Okay, so um, it starts stacking up in the middle here, as you can see, and so sometimes I'll just let, like in the end, I'll let it kind of go around the side of it instead of trying to stack um, through the very top of it, if I can if I can help it, okay? See how it makes it flatten down a little bit? Now the other darning that's in the main um, Clover book here, what they do is they come up through this center thing, so it ends up having this little hole in the middle, to me, it doesn't look as consistent, and you can get a hole that's kind of wonky on either side, and I personally don't like the look of it, because um, there's not, flowers in real life don't really look like that either. So once I've got that, 
Um, I just come through here, make this little tail a little more manageable, and tie that all the way here, and tie in the opposite direction for a square knot. Okay, and now we can just take this safely off of the loom. Now, if you were going to um, make a double flower or something, you would have put this on first or whatever middle you're gonna do before you darn it. And then after you do this first color, you would put your second color on or you would continue on. So you do the outer flower first and then you do the inside flower and then you do your darning in the middle. So now I can just pop this off the loom, the base and then it's just easy to just pop this off. And then you've got your tails here. You can um, cut it, like cut your darning. You can, you can weave that into the back as well and then cut it. Uh, either way, as long as you've got a nice square knot on here, you're gonna be good. And then this can be left long to tie it into something or when we're doing the crochet, since I've already done a square knot, what I would do is I can end up cutting these and of course you can put a little fabric glue just to be safe. And then these, uh, these petals, depending, some of them might get pulled two at a time and then they get worked into your crochet project. So anyway, that's, that's how you do it. That's the most simple of all the flowers. Um, so, uh, anyway, the, the square one is sim made simple, uh, simple like that, except it's, it has a certain pattern going around here. And then um, you actually end up doing this special chain stitch around it and give it like this extra oomph. Um, let me show that to you because the chaining um, called out in the book, um, you'll need the instructions in here because it's so much easier to see. Um, let me show this to you. This cowl right here. So this is a square. That's the back, but that's just how they had it flipped for the thing. But you could add, you could actually do this back on top of here and then have it look the same. Let's see how it's, it's a square. And then it has this chain stitch hanging out on top. And then, so you put the chain stitch on while it's on the loom. Okay, so while this is on the base, you, you do the chain stitch. So you put that on while it's on there. Um, and uh, and it holds it nice and taut like it's it's all you, you saw how tight that was on there So it holds it on there. You're able to stitch it how you need and then once you pull it off um, You have to secure the loop so that that chain doesn't come off and so that's what this pattern is all about It looks really cool um, Anyway, I I love it. I, this would be nice even if you didn't finish it out as a cowl and you made it as a, a scarf or something too and you could even um, use that technique and um, work it together in a big shawl. Um, but anyway, here's that scarf here that has the double flower with the little dot um, that's created from this one. I call it a dot, triangular. I was in the floor covering business and um, when you had these little square um, things, sometimes we would call it a dot. Like if you see an octagon and then you see this little square next to it, it's called an octagon and dot pattern. <laughs> so <laughs> that's why I call that a dot. So anyway, that's that. And um, man, I hope you guys, I hope that was helpful for you. Um, let me fix the camera one more time to, so I can see you again. Um, oops, there we go. Hey, not that you can't see that stuff, but <laughs> anyway, did you guys like that? Was that cool? I couldn't have really done that because um, that took me a little bit of time plus I was talking through it. It just, it would have eaten up all my time on Annie's. Um, they do have like a stop animation thing. If you go on the Annie's page, uh, their, their Facebook page, and you can see them making this. And in fact, I was there when we did it. So like, <laughs> what you don't know is actually filmed backwards. So we had it started on the loom and it was it was it was on there and then was like put on and it was it's a stop animation so we like basically unraveled it and then he shot it or he he did it in post production he did it backwards and so it has that really cool thing so it's just a series of pictures and then we just undid it as it as it went so yeah um 
Very helpful. Yay. Thank you, Kasid. I'm so glad. So glad. Well, you guys, if you'll be sure and share this video, uh, it would it would honor me. I would love it. Um, Beth and I would be grateful. So this is the book. Um, I really want this book to do well. Um, this is my first um this is uh, all my other books so far have been um, like contract kind of books. So this is my first royalty book as a published author. I'm so excited. I want to get it to that number one spot. Yeah. And then maybe we'll see more stuff come out from myself. Yes. <laughs> maybe they'll call on me again. <laughs> so um, uh, it's exciting. It's exciting. Uh, if you are a loom knitter, we're getting really close to, we're working on a um, companion workbook to go along with the, um, with my other book. This is the self-published book. It is for loom knitting. Um, That's the loom knitting um, guide and patterns book. And so we're working on a um, companion product to go with that. Um, thank you guys for sharing. Thanks, Jewelfly. Thanks for the congratulations. I really appreciate it. Um, I, Beth, Beth says thank you as well. I know she does. Uh, I'm excited for her because this is her first book to publish as well. And uh, anyway, it's it's awesome to do it with um, someone you like, huh? <laughs> and I love all the people on the projects. The people at Annie's are amazing. I'm not just saying that. Like, really. Everybody that I've ever worked with at Annie's has been amazing. Love them. And um, anyway, love you guys. I hope you have a great day. Um, I'll be back after spring break. Be good to each other. You'll see a video from me tomorrow. So be on the lookout for the knit cloud pillow, the head in the clouds knit pillow. And um, you guys have a great day. Happy knitting and crochet. Bye.